Hey everybody, welcome to Goshen Prepping. We're having a Goshen Prepping here at my typical desk tonight because, well, let's see, my eldest daughter is not feeling well, my second daughter has lots of homework to do, and Ashley's busy with a baby, plus we had a birthday party today, so uh, I decided to go ahead and sit here instead and not worry about going to our kitchen table, which we usually do. But I'm going to start saying hi to everybody as everybody comes in. We'll try to make this kind of like our typical, normal, old school uh, live stream that we always do. Chillin' Penguin Army in the house. Baby Doc, hello. Hi, everybody. Storm Chasing Gal. Redfish, Texas. Everybody's coming in. Good to see everybody. How is everybody tonight? <clears throat> What's the weather like in your neck of the woods? And what kind of preps have you guys been working on? Let's see. Ah, Sven from Puerto Rico. And PDM Semper Fi. Hello, in Arizona. Gina, Phil, how are you? Sylvia, Susan, Thomas. Uh, everybody's everybody's good. Um, my eldest daughter, Naomi, she's not feeling very well, but everybody else is doing pretty well. We had a, a birthday party for one of my little, 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 littler kids today, and so I'm over here instead of actually seeing the messy kitchen with all the birthday, birthday stuff around. Plus, uh, it looks like it's most, on the most part going to be me tonight. Um, Ashley might stop in and have a seat and say hi for a little bit too. But anyway, um, at least it's going to be me and you and all the stuff we can discuss. So how's everybody tonight? What's going on? What kind of uh, preps have we go, do we have that we're working on lately? Um, I am inventorying my get home bag. And uh, I decided to go ahead and do a video on my get home bag too. I, I often take it when I travel. I actually have a couple different ones. And uh, it's kind of nice to um, kind of go through on, on occasion to make sure that things are all charged up in there to make sure that everything's staying nice and fresh. And I'm going to be making a video with that probably this week is probably my best guess. Let's see. Anything going on? Hugs to Naomi. Uh, I don't know if they're watching. They're actually sitting in the living room kind of like behind the camera that way. So they might be listening. So um, hugs to Naomi. Storm chasing gal. She probably actually saw that comment on there. All right. Let's see. Hey, Pam. Good stuff. Really good things coming in tonight. Um, we have in here in Michigan, we were having really nice weather. In fact, this weekend, we were in a parade for the dojo that I teach at. And um, <clears throat> and that went really well because last year, we actually did a parade there at the same time as the Irish Festival Parade, which is always fun. And we got snowed on big time. But uh, yesterday, it was actually, uh, turns out, it was just a little bit of sprinkling rain, but nothing bad at all. Um, who farted? I don't know, good question, who farted. At one point after crap hits the fan, is it good to abandon state and federal law and order and institute local control and protection of citizens? I think that's going to be an inevitable, inevitable natural evolutionary flow. If you ever spend time in third world countries, and I mean like serious third world in the middle of nowhere, that's pretty much how it's done. Safety and security is not up to the state. It's not up to the government. And, and it's certainly not up to like an individual family. But what you'll actually have are roving bands and gangs setting up jurisdictions. And they're not like gangs like here in America where the gangs actually have ulterior motives and trying to, you know, maybe have drugs or power control. They're literally the, made up of usually like the men of those specific areas of the community will band together. And that's probably what's going to end up happening here as well. And uh, I, th I think, I mean, it really depends on how bad it gets as far as crap hits the fan. If we're seeing a total collapse, and especially since America is pretty much armed to the teeth, I think it's a nat natural evolution. We're going to see people taking care of each other in that situation. Uh, out here where we live in the middle of nowhere, um, you'll often have, out of the blue, somebody who doesn't belong in our neighborhood walking down our street. You'll see them because we live so far out in the middle of nowhere. It's like, why are you here? And you'll see the neighbors getting their guns out. They'll they'll do that right away and basically, you know, let people know that you're not welcome in this area, even though we actually obviously have, you know, government control out here too. Oh, Phil got some number 10 cans of powdered milk for half price. That's great. You can never get enough of uh, powdered milk. Um, all right. And I'm going through questions, guys. I don't have, obviously, a moderator. At least we have moderators in the house. Like there's Weedy Garden and Phil and Marsock Raider and Pam. Um, but I... I don't have a moderator like Hannah or Naomi to shout out questions. So if you're going to send a question specifically, try to put it as that, that little at sign and start typing in Goshen Prepping. Then you'll see the box pop up that says Goshen Prepping. Click on that 
and that way it highlights on my screen and I can easily see it. That's the best way to try to get a message to me because I really don't want to have any, if there's questions or even just conversation um, coming through, I don't want to have any of that missed. Like Kurt Downey says, what's up? Oh, he's actually he's talking to Sean. He's not talking to me. Yeah, what's going on, Sean? How you doing? Still living in your car and work is slow? Keep at it, buddy. Uh, Colleen, what are you doing to prepare for the solar eclipse? Uh, not really anything. I mean, we have the stuff to be able to observe the eclipse, and we're not in the, the zone where it's going to be like perfect by any means. I don't think um, it, we're going to be seeing uh, anything as far as like any type of I don't know. A lot of people look at it as like prophetic signs. Other people look at it as and there's going to be problems with like, um, you know, like terrorist waves or something that day. I'm not sure what people are even thinking. I know Texas is doing it not because of that, but the sheer number of people who are going to be going down there to to view it. I think that's the biggest thing that we're looking at. Um, and I don't think it's going to be at least where we're at. It's not anything that I'm concerned about at all in the least a little bit. Um, let's see. Oh, Clutch cargo, great question. What's better for home defense, a shotgun or a rifle? For home defense, without a doubt, a shotgun. Usually it's the question, a shotgun or a handgun. And if that's the case, I still pick a shotgun. Um, so even if you just, especially if you just use birdshot. And I know there's there's a lot of people out there who say birdshot, you know, that's never fatal. That's what they say anyway, and they're wrong. It is. It could be fatal at 25 yards, and that's like pretty much the distance, easily the distance within any room in your house. Ammo's super cheap for it. Um, and the thing is, when you when you look at that, obviously, if you have like a rifle, that rifle round will go through walls like they're not even there. And you need to understand what's behind that wall and possibly what's behind the next wall. And you need to account for every single round that leaves that gun. And obviously, that could be catastrophic for your family or possibly an innocent, innocent bystander. For a shotgun, especially loaded with birdshot, you don't have to worry about that as much, per se. I mean, often the birdshot will get embedded in walls. Um, at a certain distance, close up, the person is going to be, it, it may not take them out, but it's certainly going to put them in a position where they're, not, they're going to be so vulnerable at that point. So I always think, especially if you don't have a lot of time to practice and train, you always need to practice and train, by the way. But if you don't have a lot of time to practice or, practice or train, shotguns are amazing. Because you don't have to have incredible accuracy, bullseye accuracy to get your target, especially with your target moving or you're moving or your target's firing back at you, et cetera. So shotguns, in my opinion, are pretty much the, the perfect weapon for home defense, especially if you can't afford any other weapons or if you don't have a handgun and not proficient at it. I always say a shotgun's one of the best things to go for. Um, let's see. Let me go through some more questions here. How hard is it to get to level one ham radio license? Um, you know, it's not hard. For me personally, I have like a pretty extensive um, electron, electronics background. And I, ever since I was a teenager, I would build things electronic wise. I built like bugs and frequency jammers and stuff. You know, that's the kind of thing I, I would do. So for me, it's like a walk in the park. But overall, I like the license as far as this because I even say, you know, if you want to get a ham radio, and you don't think that um, you're going to be even using it, they'll say, well, when crap hits the fan, there's nobody going to be regulating as far as licenses go. I agree, but it's still good to know how the system works. It's really good for that. I mean, obviously, for the level one, if you're going to be, if it's going to break, you're, not, you're probably not going to have the know-how to actually break into it and try to find out what's going on with it and why it's not working. But at least I'll have a better understanding for the ham radio. So I will tell you right now, there's a lot of uh, ham radio license tests now online, which makes it nice. You don't even have to go anywhere anymore. And so I really don't see why anybody shouldn't get at least a level one. I mean, besides even just breaking the law. I mean, like right now, obviously you can't use it unless it's an emergency, but why not get it? It's going to give you a little bit more better insight as far as the actual um, device. And again, it's not, I, I don't think the, the test is, I, for me, it was like a walk in the park. I didn't have to even study. But for a lot of people, I think that they've, they've simply just get one of the different booklets and go through it. You'd be amazed in how actually straightforward and easy the thing is. Um, let's see. Yeah, so Colleen, hey, Colleen Rodimer, how are you? It's been a while. Um, in Texas, you're asked to stock up and wondering why. I don't know. That's a great question. I'm wondering why too. Because I will tell you, as a scientist, the eclipse is not going to pose anything 
for us at all, period, end of story. It doesn't increase gravitational waves. It doesn't cause more earthquakes, et cetera. We're getting more earthquake activity and everything now because of the sun, and it has nothing to do with the eclipse. Um, the only thing I can think they're saying stocking up because of possible chaos that might envelop, I suppose there's a possibility that, you know, I believe, and I'm sure you do too, there's a lot of sleeper cells in the United States, and maybe they're waiting for that one day for the eclipse to happen to do something, which, I mean, that would, for me, it'd be kind of weird wondering why that would be the case. But, but I don't know. I don't, I've heard that too, that Texas is getting ready for it. But I heard Texas said they were getting ready for it by the crowds of tourists coming in, not as far as uh, anything else. Um, let's see. Um, sorry for the dead air for a second. Uh, Mike, do you feel anything will be happening in the near future regarding hybrid attack from our adversaries? Oh, I do. Oh, yeah. That's actually... Um, I don't know. I always try to like classify or layer as far as possibilities and probabilities and such. I'd, I'd say there's going to be um, greater than 50% chance. I really do, unfortunately, but I think that's what the, the way we're heading. Because again, you always look at as far as like trends, which way you're going and such. And this is not something where it's like kind of curving over. This is an escalation. And I do believe we're going to be seeing a hybrid attack, unfortunately. I think, honestly, hybrids obviously have in both cases, but obviously, at the very least, predominantly going to be cyber and electronic attack. But you can't have, for example, just let's go ahead and pick on China. You can't have that amount of nationals coming into the country and not have something that they're planning. And Xi Jinping said very clearly that he's not looking at them as people just trying to escape China. 20, 30 years ago, we would have said that, you know, Tiananmen, Tiananmen Square and all that stuff. You would think they're trying to get here to get away from that regime. But Xi Jinping is, no, he's like, no, they're leaving because they're spreading Chinese influence around the world. Those are some, that's not exactly his words, but it's pretty close to it. Um, question from James. Oh, thanks, Phil, for passing that along. Where did you get the gold dollar bills? I get them from, well, they're called gold back or gold backs, plural. And let me bring up my list right here. I can put a link out to it. And there's actually numerous, numerous gold depositories that sell these. My favorite by far is Alpine Gold because in my opinion, they have the best prices and they put it across the best way they can to get them. So if you're going to get some of those gold backs, see if I can feel, I usually keep mine like right here. Yeah, so here we go. So here's the gold backs right here. We have, it's, it's really, they're really fun, by the way. It's not even just simply just being gold backs, but you know, this is a Utah one. Here, I'll put it up for the camera. Here's one from Utah, really cool. This one is a New Hampshire one. Neat. Um... Nevada. I like the artwork on there. And again, being 24 karat gold, they're just definitely very cool. South Dakota. Cool. And we have some bigger denominations too. Like here's a 25 from South Dakota. I, I just, there's so, look, I'm trying to separate it. You know what I'm saying? You ever have like in your fingers, you can feel like you have more than one piece of paper there. That's what I'm trying to do is separate it. But it's one piece of, it's actually a type of PVC um, because it's 25. This is, one fortieth of an ounce, and I'm trying to separate it because it's thick because it's actually gold on here, and I love gold backs. I really do. They're just really neat, and uh, things are starting to warm up here in Michigan, which means yard sale time, and I'm really looking forward to going out and taking my gold backs. I'm gonna take this, put it on video, by the way, and I'm gonna start uh, seeing if people will actually I can buy some things from some people with gold backs instead of using cash. Very curious how how many people will will take up on. I'm sure some will. All right, let's see. Now scroll down a little bit more. And my thing just jumped to the bottom. So hopefully I don't miss any questions on here. Um, so Eric says, National Guard is supposed to be in Texas and Ohio to help with crowd control, from what I've been hearing. I know that there's a tournament coming up on that, you know, for martial arts. There's a tournament coming up that weekend um, somewhere in Indiana, I think it was. Almost positive it was Indiana. Uh, Indianapolis, Illinois, maybe? I don't know. It's, it's around there somewhere. And all I know is weeks ago, I got an email that said, if you plan on coming to this tournament, you need to book your hotel room now because they're going to be booking up really fast because of this. But I'm, I'm not, that's I'm not going to go to the tournament anyway. Um, our tournament season is coming down to the end. And even worse, 
I was just, you always get hurt when you play around, you know what I'm saying? But I was actually playing around, you know, just doing some kicking and stuff with my son, who's a black belt also, by the way. I wasn't like <laughs> kid abuse. He's 18. And he, he does, he always does the spin kick, which is really fast, but I always get really quick on the spin kick to be able to punch him. So he can't actually kick me. And he saw it coming this time. So he turned the other way and kicked me in the chest and cracked a rib. So I've got a cracked rib now. And that's kind of hard because I have um, another tournament coming up in a few weeks. Then I have districts coming up after that. So I'm trying to like rehab a little bit and be ready for that with a cracked rib, which is always fun. Zook says the earth is doomed. You know, honestly, Zook, I kind of wonder if it is, you know, all these things. I, I, I'm an optimist and I love people and I'm a prepper and all of that put together really equates to survival. You know, I really do because it's not even just a matter of stocking food and having a gun. It's a matter of always having the mentality of survival. And that's what anybody will tell you whenever you actually have a situation in which somebody says, you know what, I'm going to survive this. Those are the ones who survive because the ones who don't survive give up. And I just have that, I have that mentality of always pushing, pushing, pushing. And with this, the earth very well may be doomed, but I always have, you know what, I can't sit back and just relax and watch extra episodes of reruns of Magnum PI and basically say, forget it, everything's done. I have to continue to prep because that's just who I am, especially with my family. Um, can an old fridge or freezer be used as a Faraday cage from Robert? Actually, it, it, most of them can, which is really nice because when you talk about these fridges and freezers and stuff, the layer of metal on there is actually usually quite thick. The, I have a friend, I can't give his name, who is one of the head guys who does the installs for EMP preparedness and security for the military and federal government installations. This guy's way up there. Again, I would love to tell you his name, but he swore me to secrecy. I'm not kidding you. Um, and he, and I always wondered if that was true. You know, people always say, can you put your phone in a microwave while it works as a Faraday cage? Your phone is very close to the same wavelength as far as what happens with an EMP. And he said, yes, it really does work that it, um, if you put it in the freezer, put it in the old freezer and try to call your phone. And if it doesn't ring through, um, and actually I would try a few spots just to be on the safe side, but if it doesn't ring through, then yeah, it actually works as a Faraday cage. Because what's interesting when it comes to electromagnetic waves, which we're looking at for an EMP, electromagnetic waves travel in the air. They actually travel like this as they go down. They're really cool. And they have an actual height to them. And depending on the width of the metal, you can actually have holes in the metal but if the wavelength is too big, it can't travel through that hole. Very neat stuff. And so your microwave, if you notice, you can actually see your burrito spinning in there. But it's not like just a clear window. There's actually metal there. And the metal is small enough to not let, in that case, let the microwaves out of your fridge. But it's the same thing as far as not letting the EMP or, the, in this case, the phone waves go into the microwave. Um, did I say fridge? Go into the microwave. And therefore, it will show if it's actually going to be a good Faraday cage or not. So give it a try. Take your old fridge or freezer and see if that'll work. And um, if you hear your phone ringing, then it's just a big paperweight, unfortunately. Um, yeah, so um, Knight who says, Nee. If you replace the fridge's rubber air seal with a robust foil sing seal ring, then you can use it as a fridge, as a Faraday cage. He's probably 100% right. Probably. But again, because you can actually have slits and depending on the size of the fridge or the freezer, as far as the installation there goes, you know, because it's not like metal on metal, but you always have that, like that little piece of rubber so it doesn't like slam hard. If it's thin enough, you don't even have to have any type of ring on there. And, you know, like one of the best Faraday cages you can get is simply get like an aluminum trash can. You know, the trash can rim comes up like this. You put the stuff in the trash can and then the lid comes down like this it's almost impossible for the signals to get into that trash can. But nevertheless, you hear people talk, talk all the time, said, oh, get some metal tape around the rim. And if you want to be safe and put a metal tape, you know, metal like duct tape, the, the aluminum tape around the rim, go for it. But there's no need. But same thing with the fridge and freezer. Is the actual rubber piece big enough? Is it too big? Can the, can the actual electromagnetic waves get in? It's simple. Just put your phone in there. So Knight who says knee is 100% correct. You definitely could put like some kind of foil seal ring on there, but there's actually a chance that may not even be necessary. So before I actually would jump on that bandwagon, I would test your phone out in there first and see if that's the case. 
a Chilean penguin army. As at the market um, are the glass jars of artichoke hearts, pears, or olives, the same as canned goods in the terms of longevity. And indeed, they are. Um, with those specific ones, I mean, pears do actually rest in a juice of citric acid. So there is a thought that possibly the jars could even last longer than the cans because the acidic aspects from the pears do interact with inside of the can and give you that funky metal taste. The funky metal taste doesn't change its longevity though. But, you know, after 20 years, that can of pears may be nasty. Or if you have the jar of pears, it'll actually will probably taste better. But no, that's a good, good question. It'll last just as long. Um, let's see. Storm Chasing Gal says, be on the lookout for biochemical food read labels, for sure. And the only thing I'm actually um, uh, happy about, at least, is they're actually requiring those labels to be put on there, which, you know, I thought for a while they're going to say, nope, I don't think so. Um, Sean says, I think canned food, and it just disappeared again. I'll see if I can scroll back up. Sean said he thought canned food lasts longer than the jar food. The jar food is actually, is actually made the same way. The actual contents, and here's the key, the contents inside the jar and the contents inside your can is sterile. They produce, they bring the food up to a certain point where it kills off all the microorganisms, aka practically it's just the bacteria. Um, some bacteria actually go into what are called spores, where it actually helps them basically, if they feel heat, they'll encapsulate themselves with a, with a capsule around them. And then when it gets cool again, they'll basically reemerge again as bacteria. And canned food almost came out like 40 years before it did because, and I forgot his name. I really wish I could remember the name of this guy who did this, but he actually did a test where he made it really hot to kill it off in there. And unfortunately, he didn't make it quite hot enough. We all have all his notes and he didn't quite make it hot enough. And therefore, canned food wasn't around for another few more decades after that, something like that anyway. Um, but anyways, it doesn't matter if it's the glass jar or if it's a can. The food itself doesn't have any living organisms in their bacteria is killed off because of the heat process in producing the food. Then they put it in the jar or they put it in the can. Or if you're a home canner, you put it in your jar with a seal on there. Not sealed tight, but just rest it on top. Um, it, it'll make it so it's sterile. And that's the key. That's what makes food rot. The food doesn't rot because it's just old. If food rots because it's not sterile and the bacteria starts breaking it down. And that's why it starts to smell and look really black and nasty and slimy and stuff. Um, let's see. Knight who says, nee. no offense, but if you approach me expecting to do crap hits the fan business and all you have is gold from any form, let alone gold $1 bills, I struggle not to laugh. Physical trade goods are my thing. Oh, I'm with you, knights who say knee. I'm with you 100%. And what I always say is this, you need to be extremely diversified. It just happens to be, I like gold backs. I do, I and mean, they're great things and they sponsor me too. But even beyond that, I had gold backs long before they even sponsored me. But I always say you want to have a very well diverse um, cache of things you can trade and barter. Uh, there's so many, I mean, I couldn't even list the things here. Constitutional silver or junk silver, um, ammo, food, toilet paper. I mean, obviously this goes on and on. So I'm with you. Be diversified. However, I, there, I do like the uh, goldbacks quite a bit. And there's actually a lot of stores in different states now that accept goldbacks as currency. And so let's not even talk about crapping in the fan. Let's talk about inflation. Let's talk about hyperinflation. The value of that fiat currency is going down. And when that does happen, gold prices usually go up. And so as your green dollar is starting to go downhill, that same green dollar you're buying other stuff to barter and trade with, by the way, goes downhill. The price of gold usually goes up and those gold backs are actually becoming worth more and gives you more of a spending power than your dollar bill will. Uh, let's see. From Blaze410, beside a hammer and screwdriver, uh, could I do a video on the tools to have on hand? You know, it's funny, Blaze410, I've considered that. But boy, where do I start? I mean, I guess I probably could just put together a basic toolkit because, you know, in our house, I do practically all my own work on my house. And I, I try to work on my car. I used to work on my cars extensively, but I'm just, it's getting really painful trying to climb into cars nowadays. You know what I'm saying? I don't have a garage, unfortunately. Um, so I have certain tools set aside when I work on my wood stove because my chimney requires like a giant um, pair of channel locks to be able to take off the cap. 
And then I have a whole different set of tools for such and such. And I have a set of tools for this. And granted, you could have one set of tools for everything. Um, but yeah, I could probably make a video on just some general tools you might want to consider. But the things you have to consider are, are, can be extreme. I have a welder. And my welder, I have my shields. I have the rods. I have the welder itself. I have all the things that go along with that too. And that requires its own set of tools. That's just another example. I do a lot of electrical work a lot of electrical work, and therefore I have all my tools just for the electrical work. So obviously your tool set could be like as basic as can be, possibly just have some wrenches, a good socket set, not just a socket set, but a good socket set, a set of screwdrivers, um, and a set of pliers, wire cutters, etc. But then you could expand out, couldn't we? We could expand out to the amount of tools that you could have is pretty huge. So yeah, it's probably a good video. In fact, you know what, as I'm sitting here, I'll go ahead and Type that into some notes to remind me later. Tools. There we go. Good. Good question. Thank you. Um, let's see. Yeah, there you go. Suladin. Utah has over a thousand merchants that accept gold backs. Over a thousand. And I'm going to say this. That's a thousand merchants that accept gold backs. That's not talking about how many people have gold backs, right? Because if that's the case. We're talking about Utah. Crap, it's the fan. That Utah community, we're talking about far more than a thousand merchants, we're talking about probably 10,000 people or more have those gold backs, which they'll trade in. So it's a very good thing. Uh, yeah, I saw that storm chasing gal, Dollar Tree closing a thousand stores. Uh, I have, I, I get regular news coming in from anything in business and trade and commodities and such. Um, it's funny because they don't give this information out. They, they only give it to people who actually have their business in that area. And I told them what business was, and they said, okay, we'll put you on the list. So every day I get numerous things, and they talk about that. There's all kinds of businesses going out of business right now. But I've been saying this a while, that we're heading into a greater depression. And having businesses go out of business and a, greater de and a depression go hand in hand. And that's unfortunately one of the things. Um, I see a question from Maria. Hi, how much would a 24 carat? But then it stopped there. I mean, maybe how much would a 24 carat? I don't know. I don't, I don't know how to finish that question. I was trying to speculate. Um, let's see. Uh, hello, Ray, Renee from Kansas. Good to see you. I'm scrolling down slowly. Um, do I think Glendale... Uh, my daughter wants to move. Do I think Glendale, Arizona is a safe place or just Arizona overall? Personally, I guess, I don't know, safety versus preparedness. Um, I don't know the Glendale area specifically. I've been to Arizona many, many times. Uh, I was just there in July. Um, there are certainly some places that I would not want to try to set up residence. I like Phoenix. I mean, I like it well enough. I'm not... I'm not a heat person. You know, I lived in Florida for years and I'm not a big heat person, but that's just my own preference. But Arizona, holy cow, Phoenix was like, it's a city. I mean, it's clearly a major metropolis and I don't care if crap is the man or not. You're looking at far more victims are in cities, you know, and if crap does hit the fan, cities are not a place to be. To be, place to be. I'm not sure about Glendale specifically, um, overall, Arizona, I'm sure there's some places in Arizona that are absolutely safe. I know some preppers in Arizona that do amazingly well for the fact that you can get some land out in the middle of nowhere, but then you have to worry about water and stuff. But again, there's a difference between safety and prepping. You have to be a really hardcore prepper, know what you're doing to prep in Arizona. I'm not saying you can't, but then there's some safe places in Arizona too. Um, any type of, any city right now is not a place I would want to be in. Um, let's see. I'm scrolling down. Question, will Germany go to war with Russia? Great question, Clutch Cargo. Well, here's the thing. If they do, we are also going to war with Russia because Germany is part of NATO. Um, Germany is now getting ready to start a conscription program. That and uh, what other country? There's two countries right now that are getting ready to start the draft, and Germany is one of them. They're seriously talking about it. The amount of Germans who want to volunteer for the service has basically hit an all-time minimum. And unfortunately, Germany 
is in big trouble. Their industrial complex has pretty much collapsed. Not military industrial complex. Their industrial complex has collapsed. They are in big, big, big trouble. And although I don't think, you know, if Russia goes in that direction, I don't think like Germany is specifically just on the radar of Russia, but Germany along with like, for example, the Baltic countries are preparing for World War III. They're preparing for it. They're right there. Germany is a lot closer to Russia than people think it is. It's right there. And so it's, it's a very possibility that will they go to war with Russia? I, I don't know. I, w- I would put that as better than half as well. I really do believe that within the next couple of years, we're going to be in all-out war, NATO against Russia, or some type of new established Soviet bloc or BRICS countries. I really do believe that's the direction we're heading. I guess the real question is, is it orchestrated or not? Is that what's happening? Because it's kind of hard to say if it is or not. It seems to be there's an orchestration going on because out of the blue, we're seeing all these countries everywhere getting ready for war. And it seems to be more than simply just, you know what, we want to protect ourselves. It seems to be that's, you know how it is. When you when there's war, you can't talk about anything else. It's, that's what people continuously keep talking about. All right, let's see. I heard Germany will go down first. Yeah, Barb, probably so. Germany has basically admitted they're practically speaking out of ammunition. They've given all to Ukraine. They have an incredibly low amount of people who want to serve in the military. Their military is hurting. I served with a lot of NATO guys, um, a lot of German guys in NATO, a lot of them, fantastic. But that was a different time. And unfortunately, if, if it does go that way, I think we're looking at a lot of countries are going to fall quickly. If Russia goes in, and they go into like the Baltic countries, the Baltic countries are going down fast. Um, and NATO, even though we actually have tons and tons of forces there, is, is, it's not going to be, it's not going to be a walk in the park for Russia, but they are definitely in a poised position for the fact that we have to ship things over while Russia is right there. That's basically the whole thought of it. So very well, uh, Germany very well could go down if that's, a, if that's the case. Um, people talk about EMP attacks, but has there ever been an incident of one anywhere ever? Oh, absolutely, Sean. Yeah, um, when you're actually looking at uh, the the weapon tests in the Pacific, Starfish Prime was, oh, we'd actually always seen EMP effects, by the way, EMP effects with nuclear detonations. But Starfish Prime was a high altitude detonation, and the EMP knocked out a bunch of stuff in Hawaii. Um, but I want you to understand, and this is, really simple. People think that EMPs are only with nuclear weapons. EMPs are a big part of nuclear weapons, but we can make EMPs right now, easily, just without a problem. We have, our military has EMP weapons. We have literally, Boeing has developed a missile that it's like a cruise missile can literally fly across the land and purposely pick out locations like a cruise missile can to set off an EMP charge to fry their electronics. We have that. It's not in testing phase. It's there. And so I also have people say the same thing too. It's like, well, we don't know what kind of cars are going to stall out with an EMP and stuff. That's all speculative because we no, we do EMP work all the time. We know what they do. We know the effects of it. And the EMPs are very, very real. I personally don't think an EMP, just an EMP, is going to be in our future taking out our grid. I could see an EMP taking out our grid connected with an all-out war. I could see that because it's very difficult to have just an EMP across our soil without launching us into World War III. So I really believe they're going to go hand in hand. From Shaza, hello Shaza. Does America have a canning industry? Uh, why do you, why do you beans get canned in Italy and apples in China? If we stopped all this useless freight, we might be warming and pollution. Oh, I'm with you. Oh, that, because, you know, it has nothing to do with global warming and pollution. It has nothing to do with that at all. That's not what it is. It's all about power. It's all about control. I mean, first off, why do we buy canned goods from Italy, which we do? Why do we buy apples from China, which we do? It's all a matter of just commerce across the world. That's how, that's how we've always done things, you know, at least in our lifetimes. It's always been that way. Um, and it's, not, it's often because of the bottom dollar, you know, because if you go to a country to get this specific item, you could probably get it cheaper because, 
America, we do have a higher standard of living than most of the colonized world or the first world, if you want to put it that way. Um, but we've always gotten stuff from other countries. And Italy really does have a huge export of like Italian products. I mean, that's funny to say it that way, but like sauces and uh, like olive oil um, coming out of Italy. And so could a farmer try to set up commerce here in the United States of doing nothing but making olive oil? Of course. But then he's going to have to compete with Italy if that's the case. Hello, everybody. It's Ashley. Hey, guys. You're like off the screen, Ash. Okay. There you go. <laughs> we'll pull the chair up you can for a little bit. Okay. So she was feeding the I little was. baby, and now the baby's asleep? That's, yeah, she's sleeping now. So. Okay. You want to be able to see yourself better? No, it's better. <laughs> there we go. All right. So we're just kind of chatting with everybody. I see. It's kind of, it, it's weird. How often do I make videos here? Mm, Every day? Yeah. But, but as soon as I go live, I'm kind of like, it threw everybody it's weird. Off. I don't have, I, I usually have you guys going to talk yeah, with. Yeah, normally he has a crew, but it, the crew went away, so we're filling in. So. Um, uh, from Maria. Okay, how much would 24 karat playing cards be worth at the moment? Thank you. Great show. I don't know. I've never seen playing 24 cards? karat playing cards. That's a playing card I'd like to get my hand on. <laughs> I don't know. It really depends on how much gold... It's not a matter of carat as far as the pureness of the gold in there. 24 karat gold in a playing card? I would say there's probably a buck worth in there. Maybe two yeah, bucks worth in there. It's hard to say for sure. And send playing cards, 52 cards. So 52 bucks. That's my best <laughs> guess. I've never heard that question before. That is odd. Um, let's see. Wow, you're really behind. I was I'm so bar. I mean, you I was, know, I was that's why I always have. I that's why I always have Hannah and Naomi. It's terrible. I know. I just can't keep up. There's so many questions, and I just want to talk. I know, right? Yeah, Becky, microwaves are Faraday cages. I will still challenge you to test your microwave. By the way, I've actually talked to rarely, mind you, a few people who said, "Well, mine didn't work as one," but yeah. most people will definitely test it out. There's a few people that said they tried theirs and theirs didn't work even on here. So, from James, we should watch March 23rd, 22nd through 23rd. 80,000 Muslims on the Temple Mount with possible breakout of Hezbollah on Purim. Security is extremely high and violence and breakout. Very well could be. Although Purim is a Jewish holiday. It's not one of the big high holiday Jewish holidays. I don't know if it really matters or not. And this just jumped all the way down. You're good. No, I'm not. It's, it's just, oh, did you yeah. lose a bunch? It's really weird, guys. I'll scroll down. I've got the little wheel on my mouse. Maybe I should stop using the wheel. Maybe, Maybe that's, that's what I'll do. If I just simply scroll down a little bit. Um, boy, yeah, I'm, I'm so far down. I apologize, guys. Let me go. I'm trying to go back up and find out. Oh yeah, so Ellie asked, "Where's Ashley and Hannah?" Here's Ashley. I'm here. Um, reason they weren't here today was I mean, there's so many things going on right now. It was our little girl's birthday, so the, the kitchen's decorated with right. We didn't want jellyfish in front of our face. So. And the table that we put the camera and everything on still has like a big pink tablecloth and stuff on there. And I was like, you know, Ashley. I might just do the, the live stream here. Well, Naomi is sick. Hannah is has classes is this pulling week, her really hair does. out. Yeah. yeah, for the amount of homework she has. And Ashley was feeding the baby. Yeah. So I was like, I'll just come over here and then if you have a chance, Ashley stop by. So oh yeah, somebody else, where's your partners in crime? Yeah. So we're here. We're just off to the side. Um, from April, do you know can an electric pellet stove be used to just burn firewood if crap hits the fan and there's no electricity? Well, first off, for a pellet stove to work, you have to have electricity, first off. The hopper on there to the disperse blower. the pellets yeah. and the blower, too, yeah. require electricity. It's not much, by the way. It's, it's actually minuscule, but you're going to have to have some kind of small solar generator at least. I, I do not have a pellet stove. We purposely bought our property with the amount of forest. It's, we have enough wood that will last us forever, and we literally don't even have to cut trees down for wood they here. We have so many acres and so many trees that fall that if we simply just take those trees that fall and process them, it easily gets us through these harsh Michigan winters. 20 cords of wood a year. Um, I don't own a pellet stove because I prepare. I'm a prepper and people up here love their pellet stoves. And they're like, oh, you should get a pellet stove instead. I'm like, a pellet stove, most of them, you cannot use regular wood in. Yeah. I have heard, but this is not an informative thing. I'm not giving you information on this because I don't own one. I've heard you can get some pellet stoves that also take regular wood. I personally have never seen one. I don't own a pellet stove. Um, I own a big, honking, fat wood stove <laughs> that, that keeps our whole house. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty amazing system. Um, let's see. Uh, from John, have you looked into the Laura radios that can be used to 
to create a local mesh network seems like a great way to communicate privately with decent coverage. I have, John. Um, they are good for local, and that's it, because as far as the frequencies, or not the frequency, but like the range on them, um, it's still limited per se. But for the fact that they are set up to be isolated for you only is a nice thing. There's a lot of, there's actually new stuff coming out now. Some of them, by the way, I don't think the lore is like this. I could be wrong. There's some of them that actually still use cell phone towers, but it's actually with a radio. And we're not talking about the old Nokias or whatever those, well, or Novotel, whatever those things used to use. And those are great. I've actually heard people saying they want to buy them for Crap It's the Fan. Those won't work when Crap It's the Fan. Cell phone towers, even if the tower has power, that's an if, they're not going to let you use it. It's only going to be used for emergencies. They're going to lock everybody out, including for your phones too. But the LoRa system, I don't think the LoRa system's like that. The LoRa system uses either Bluetooth or Wi-Fi or something like that. And it's actually pretty good for, for small things. From PJ, how long after an EMP would it be safe to take your wrapped items out? Um, immediately. You couldn't be fast enough taking them out of the Faraday cage when the emergency is gone. For the, the three set levels of an EMP, there's three distinct phases. We're still talking about in a matter of just, uh, I don't, it's not even like two seconds, something like that. Yes, yeah, so you can immediately take them out. I'm trying to scroll through, look at questions, guys, because I really jumped um, toward, just... toward the bottom. Yeah, so guys, I'm going to start scrolling back down again. If I missed your question, then please put it back to me again, and I'll try to get it. And I've noticed some of our uh, moderators are also letting me know about certain questions, too. There's a, We've had a there's few that one. where we were, yeah. There's Partners in Crime. I saw that one. Where's Ashley and Hannah? Don asked. Okay, from Don Hill. Hello, Don. While I was planting today, I realized that no one talks about uh, HWO to, to label, label your plant. Oh, oh, how to label a plant. So it's misspelled. I buy a ton of popsicle sticks from the dollar store. Oh, yeah. No, that's good. Um, popsicle sticks are great. The only problem we've had with popsicle sticks <laughs> is they get weathered they out do. themselves. And we like to... Pl um, um, Paint rocks yeah. is one of our fun things to do. Right, and it's, it's fun for the kids too. And basically that's what we do is we set them up with rows and we put painted rocks and stuff out there to know that's what we do. And uh, it's just kind of fun for everybody to get involved in that. Uh, Ellie asks if her a knife sharpener. Do you have recommendations for a knife sharpener? Oh, I do. If I could just remember what brand it was. It wasn't a Gerber, was it? Or not Gerber, that's baby no, food. No, it's my knife. My oh, knife, it is? My knife's a Gerber. Okay. I wish I could tell you. I'm honestly, I, I've been meaning to do... Here's the thing. Ready? We're in Michigan, land of cold and snow. I always look forward to springtime coming where it's nice outside so I can get some stuff done and also film it. So I plan on doing a lot of filming outside this summer, including my knife sharpener. It may, you may laugh for that, but my, even though we have a basement, my knife sharpener, I don't do it in the basement. I do that kind of stuff outside. outside yeah, it's great. So I have a video. I, I don't have one coming yet, but I'll be making a video this summer on my knife sharpeners and talking about a few different ones. Right now, my brain, if you know me well enough, I have brain problems. I can't remember. Uh, it's on his list. I can't remember the name of my knife sharpener, but I'll get back to you on that. Um, let's see what else. I'm trying, I'm trying to go th you're, you're, slow. I know people are putting it to Goshen Prepper. Goshen prepping, which is good, but not everybody does that. So I just want to make sure I catch everybody's questions as they go down. So I actually caught the last one. Yep. Um, from Johnny. Hey, Johnny. What do you think about cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, and gold rising in value? Um, I'm, I'm not, obviously, a financial advisor. But I love finances, and I love day trading. I love all that stuff. I love it. And when you talk about watching channels, sometimes those are the channels I watch, you know. Um, the, the general overall idea that I've heard from so many people who know this a lot better than I do, they say that crypto and Bitcoin follow the stock market. And they may not follow the stock market perfectly, like you see the market going up, the S&P 500, and you're going to see crypto following it. That doesn't always happen. I mean, it does actually happen quite often, but not always. But if we're talking about a major collapse of stocks, you're going to see crypto and Bitcoin following it. And for me, and by the way, there's all these mega billionaires who own a ridiculous amount of stock in practically everything, keep this in mind, are selling it like it's going out of style. They're selling their stock right now, yeah, which could waves. be the catalyst to start the market crash in the first place, but they know something's yeah. coming. Now, 
we see three markets. There's three predominant markets. And try to remember this. This is really, really cool stuff. We have stocks, stocks and bonds. We have commodities and we have real estate. And we always see those three coinciding with each other. When you see one rising, the other two are either staying still or they're going down. <coughs> so one's going up, the other two are usually on their way down. Like for example, the Great Depression, we know the stock market crashed. As soon as it did, uh, was it real estate or commodities went up? It was stock market. It was real estate, real estate went up. Yeah. So as the stock market crashed, real estate went up, commodities stayed mostly still, went up and down a little bit, but here we see um, my brain is so we're not working. Stock market's going down. And of course, gold is commodities. But you see uh, real estate going up. And that's what happened during the Great Depression. And then as World War II kicked in, stock markets were still down. And then you see a decrease now in real estate. But commodities are going up. And they went up big time. If you own commodities going into World War II, you were making big money. And they even had to ration commodities because everybody wanted it. War was over, and guess what happened? The whole recycle cycle started over again. Commodities went down, go in the 50s. Real estate started going up again. Not real estate. Stock market started going back, back up again. But those three are always coinciding with each other. Long story short, if you're seeing Bitcoin and crypto, which follow stocks, if they go down, they usually go down with the stock market, and you'll see a rise in gold. That's almost always what happens. But we also see real estate coming in, too. Um, isn't it illegal in Glendale, Cali to catch rainwater? I've heard in most places, if not all of Cali, it's illegal to catch rainwater, but I don't know for sure. I know Colorado it was, um, but they changed it now. And I, I could have swore I read the laws now. You could actually get two barrels per household. But then somebody on the channel just recently said, no, it's only one barrel. But they've started allowing it now. That's good. But understand that... A lot of the water from those areas are, is not their own. They actually have it sold off, and certain places have water rights that, per, that are actually more dominant or for, over somebody's well, for example. So they can actually shut down people's wells and stuff. And, uh, and so if we're actually catching rainwater, it's actually decreasing, technically, the groundwater by how much, though? It's ridiculous. I don't think anybody should ever stop you catching you know, water. Free water. Yeah, exactly. I but I, it's I just it's one ridiculous. of those. It is. Another one thing of those the government is. More control. Got exactly. We got, looks like we got a super chat somewhere. Oh, we do? Yeah. Okay. I'm working our way down. Okay. So if you, if you get the super chat or super sticker, we're getting there, guys. Thank you. Um, from John, even if a person won't accept gold backs or silver when you offer, it's still open dialogue to promote the whole idea of gold and silver. Oh, well, yeah, exactly. That's it. And the thing is, it really, I guess it really depends on what you're trading to. Like right now, the one gold back Your wallets are here. is worth like four bucks. So here is a New Hampshire gold back. Just because it says New Hampshire doesn't, doesn't mean you have to spend it in New Hampshire. But this is one thousandth of an ounce of gold. It's worth, as far as gold backs go, just over four bucks. And so if you go somewhere and somebody has like a gallon of milk and they want four bucks for it, I think a lot of people, especially if they know anything about as far as gold and stuff goes, to say, listen, I don't have four bucks, but I'll give you this beautiful, shiny gold back if you'll take that. I think a lot of people will. And especially if you do see crap hitting the fan and stuff going down and gold prices going up, it's only going to become worth more. So that person who had the milk, who has the cow, will be like, oh, I got this. It was worth, worth four bucks. Now it's worth six or eight as things are getting more and more tight. But yeah, there's no, just because certain businesses and stuff won't take it, it's always a good conversation, even just about as far as the instabilities of our garbage fiat currency, which drives me nuts. I mean, obviously, I have dollars in my wallet, but fiat currency is not based on anything anymore. It's just whatever they decide yeah. to make it at. I mean, obviously, it's a supply and demand thing, but still, I don't want to put my entire investment of my entire life in just all that. Uh, Arizona is total scorched in the summer. That's what it was when I was down there. Yeah, it, night. Well, Arizona's really rough. Yeah, so we were there last July for competitions after I got some of these big medals from. And it was it was it was a little toasty. A little warm. I like cold. Um, what is actually currently a safe place to live in? Any work of America, but I would okay, maybe talking to somebody else. All right. I'm trying to look for questions that might be for me. Um no. Somebody says, have cash on hand. I'm going pretty fast now because nobody's talking to me. They're talking to each other. <laughs> Increase the volume, please. 
take five? Uh, my no, somebody already answered that. You're good. Yeah. No, you just have to fix it on your end. It's fine. We've had a lot of people respond and say that's okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, scroll, scrolling, scroll, still scrolling. Germans made the best stuff for centuries. I know, Savage. They their engineering was top notch. It's fantastic, and it's sad because what's happening over there? There's just their their industry is doing so terrible. Um, yeah, everybody's stressed out and burned out in Germany. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, Celine Seven Seven. Denmark is planning to draft women. I remember, I saw that there was actually one place we're considering female conscription. But I, th I don't think it was Denmark that I saw. I'm not saying you're wrong. It, I think there maybe have three countries now, if that's the case. That's not good. Um, Belinda, we have troops in Germany. We do have troops in Germany. As I said, I was in NATO and been to Germany many times because of that. NATO is one of our allies, very close ally. JBS, please be nice. You're kind of being an ass. Ooh, get him, Ashley. Where do you see that? <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh, so this, okay, I'm going to pick on you, JBS. Your your uh, JPS obviously must stand for just bullshit. That's that's your name. So listen, just bullshit. So there's another one of those channels. LOL. War war war. Probably never even served. Oh, didn't serve, huh? Okay, whatever. Whatever. Just did four and hang out. Oh wait, you have friends just asking. Yeah, you sound like one of those people who never served. Um, me personally, ass wipe. I was spec ops. You know, you. Just, I'm sure. Just I'm, be nice. You're, you're, no, you're, no, no, no. He's not no, being he's nice. Being a jerk. He is gone. I'm not being nice. I'm not putting up with that. This is, listen, all of you guys I love, don't get me started. I'm not going to get frustrated. But I put this information out. Personally, I love just talking with all of you guys. I love talking with you guys. Secondly, I put this out, information out, generous-wise. I just wanted people to understand how to do stuff. Then you have some schmuck like that who comes through. I have no time for people like that. Um, let's see. Yeah, so if there's any more uh, moderators in the house, I'm scrolling down. Yeah, there's a couple of them. Um, yeah, so if you guys see him, here's the thing, guys, moderators. If you see somebody down there that says, oh, he's just saying things that are wrong, then out they go. Yeah, it's, you it, know, nobody it's, has time to be an ass. That's it's like it. this, you ready? Here's my analogy. Because people are armchair experts on stuff and they want to be jerks about things, let me ask you something. If I'm standing out on my front lawn <coughs> and I'm watering my grass and some guy comes up and starts saying that stuff to me, what am I going to do? I'm, I'm, I'm either going to kick his ass or I'm going to be like, you know, you're not worth it. I'm going to my house or I'm going to call the cops. I'm going to do something. But why is it if it's suddenly electronic and digital like this, that they think it's okay for us to engage and talk with them? I'm not going to engage in people like that. So moderators feel free. If people are acting like that, just boot them. You know what? We have way too many things going on right now. I have to deal with people who basically are they're just trolls. That's all they are. Um, let's see. So I can get all upset about that. I'm scrolling down, looking for more questions. Everybody's saying hi to me. Hi, everybody. Who's <laughs> yeah, I must be getting close but to the yeah. bottom when Ashley just walked in. All right. I'm looking for more questions. Oh, good. That's great. Old Hippie says, rolled gold tomatoes are canned in Indiana. That's fantastic. And Bush's beans are canned in Tennessee. I do like Bush's beans. The vegetarian one. Yeah, we eat really the vegetarian good. one. Uh, Storm Chasing Gal, how's the kitties, Ashley? Um... They're good. They've been a pain lately. <laughs> Let's just keep it that way. They're, the boy cat's been a pain. Um, the the boy cat, which likes, is my daughter's cat. Likes to pee in the shoes. Yeah, and he loves me. He will not. And I'm allergic to cats. And he's like always rubbing on my legs, doing that cat thing. And he's so cute. And sometimes I'll pet him and stuff, but then I have to go wash my hands because I'm going to break out if I don't. But I love the little guy. But he just loves me too much. It's like, <laughs> there's other people in the house. Can't you give some of them that love too? <laughs> Kevin says, stop stalling. They want the baby. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. No. Is she sleeping? No, I think see, she just woke up. Um, so Prepson says, what's the current price for a five gold back? I, I wish I could tell you offhand. I probably, I could jump over there during the live stream, but I don't want to jump over there. Right, one. exactly. I would say it's probably around 20 bucks. Probably a little bit more than 20. $21 maybe. That's my best guess the last time I checked over there. Um, cool. Connie says, I have an EBO from Italy every morning. It's my medicine. That's great. That's good stuff. Okay, look, I finally got down to the super sticker. <laughs> and it's gone. Marvin. Look, so obviously scrolling doesn't work, Ashley. It just disappeared again. Wow. This silly computer. 
I don't know if it's my computer or what. And now there's millions of other questions coming through too. <laughs> well, this drives me nuts. That. This is why I need Naomi and Hannah I know, here. I know, I know. We totally Oh yeah. my gosh. I went, it jumped way. Okay, so anyways, I scroll back up. Marvin, thank you for the super sticker. We have a pair. Give it a big green thumbs <laughs> up. Thank you. you're awesome. <laughs> what would you do for a Klondike bar? Yeah, yes, he's asked that before. Week. I'll do a lot of stuff, Mars Operator. You just... Well, it's not keto, so you really couldn't do anything. Oh, but... well, Klondike bars may be a reason to break keto. <laughs> they're just... They're, why are they so delicious? It's ridiculous. Um, you look... Oh, see, it looks like you need a break. Yeah. Do you all watch The Madness? Is Michigan going to the dance? Um, I have no idea. My job per se, making videos is to watch the madness. Um, wait, let's talk about March Madness. Oh, you're probably talking March Madness. No, if that's the case, no, I don't watch it. I, like, I used to watch, it's basketball. It's I used to watch ball. sports, but I, I just don't have time anymore. Baseball's the only thing I know. With, between the channel, family, and martial arts every day, I don't have time. We don't have time for anything. Yeah, exactly. If we can get our to-do list, we're good. For the week, we're good. Um, do you think there's a health benefit to Maricon olive oil, Patty? Uh, this is one of those times I'll tell you, I'm not really sure. I'm not sure what Maricon olive oil is. But olive oil itself, yes, is fantastic stuff. Everything's great. All right, let me scroll down a little bit more. Oh, yeah, happy birthday to the little girl. Thank you. It's always fun to have little girl birthdays. Um, how dare you have a family and do the right things? I know, Zook. <laughs> this time of day or this time of the life, we shouldn't have to worry about that stuff at all. It's good. So it's hard, guys. I really like having like Hannah or Naomi checking the computer so yeah, I can like, really talk to you. I can look at the camera Wait, and talk yes, to you. Our wood stove, wood stove does have a name. He's Sir Roasty Toasty. Oh, I forgot about that. So we haven't said that pretty years. much anything in our house has a name. So. Yeah, Sir Roasty Toasty. We name our cars. We name. It's just fun. It's just easier. Especially having kids, too. Everybody likes that kind of stuff. I don't like kids like that. Well, it helps like if you're taking a different car, then you can say what car it is and the kids know. So. Yep. Um, let's see. Um, we're actually from Ottawa. Yeah, which is great. Less for me to answer questions. It's right there. Saja says, after EMP, I would leave as long as you can follow up. Oh, okay, maybe that's not a question. Never mind. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, honestly, no, we talked about that. After an EMP, I would leave in as long as you can follow up as possible. Yeah, so there is follow up. You do have to worry about that. If there's one EMP, there very well may be more. The attack may not be over, but, but the actual EMP itself is within seconds is done. But that's the whole thing is you always have to look at what's going on. I mean, if you need to get it out for whatever reason, um, go for it. But um, anyways, yeah. Two rockets were shot over, shot over to Japan almost back to back. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a North Korea thing, Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. They're really good at picking on Japan. Which, same thing, just like Germany. You know, Germany is a strong ally. Japan is an incredibly strong ally for the United States. And, and their economy is crashing too. It's just doing terrible. And I've got friends over there, and it, it's just it's an amazing place. But unfortunately, they they've hit a point in their their economy, and with the people, it's just doing absolutely terrible. Um, from April, how soon after do you have to get your electronics into a Faraday cage? Oh, if you don't have your stuff in a Faraday cage, it's too late. Um, now, I talk about this as an EMP all the time, and and again, I do have a friend who. Uh, is I can't give his name out. Who oversees all of it? For, not all of it. He probably doesn't do all the military, but it is military and federal government installations. And it really comes down to um, for EMPs. If if you have a device like right now, I'm on a computer system. This computer system is plugged in the wall, and the thousands of miles of power lines going down our country are going to take those ions and send it to your house arc and spark and catch houses on fire and fry any electronics you have. They're going to be gone. When you disconnect that device, so here is, here's the phone for my martial arts dojo. I take this phone and it's just sitting on a desk, not near any type of power cords or anything. There's an excellent chance, not 100% at all, an excellent chance this phone will still survive, even though it's not in a Faraday cage because it's not plugged in. Now, will it actually get effects from the EMP and the ions from the ionosphere, et cetera? Of course it will. But since it's such a small area, the amount of ions going on this is actually going to be, in some cases, almost negligent. There is, it's all a matter of roll of the dice. Is there a chance it'll be fried? Is there a chance it'll survive? Yeah, there's chances. That's why you put it in a Faraday cage. 
But understand, there's going to be countless things that people, if this happens, if it's a big if, obviously, if it happens, there's going to be countless people and stories where they have stuff on a desk. And on that desk, um, the stuff survived and basically made it through and never had it in a Faraday cage. All that the Faraday cage does is makes it so now you are practically speaking guaranteed that things will survive, and that's the whole point of it. But they have to be in the Faraday cage when the EMP hits because it's so fast that there's, you can't get your stuff in your Faraday cage within a second. It's less than a second as far as how fast it's going to be. Um, very good. Oh, yeah, Japanese Sea, Elizabeth, thank you. Um, let's see. Keep going. I'm looking for more questions and stuff. I'm trying to buy land in the mountains uh, by ponds. Do you, do you recommend that? Oh, for sure I recommend that. Yeah, if you can get in the mountains and it has some water on it, that's what, what it's all about. Before coming to Michigan, we put, we put some earnest money down to buy some property in Colorado. And uh, is in the mountains. I mean, the location was incredible. It was beautiful. Oh, my gosh, it was so nice. And so as we're looking around the place, we notice they have a well. Okay, that's good. Then we, I try to get through to the realtor. It was like, how much is the water? What's the well table at? What's the, how much water to put out in gallons per minute? How deep is it? Not get a whole lot of information back. So we look around the property more next time we're there and we find another well. Oh, two more wells. Oh, three more wells. The four wells. Yeah. And I was doing everything to try to get out of them if the wells were still working. Because I, that's the biggest, especially in Colorado, you, you're in big trouble unless you actually have some water. There was certainly not a pond on the property. Long story short, I said, can I take apart one of the well casings and look for water in there myself? And they're like, sure, there's nothing, it's bone dry. And then we found out, that's when they admitted, oh yeah, we actually just have a cistern and we have water delivery system, system that brings water to us. And I said, Ashley, there's no way yeah, we're getting we, that property. Yeah. So, nope. so we basically, that was enough for them to give us our money, our earnest money back and we moved on. Um, let's see. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Arminius, the CME only emits the E3. The e E3 is the most dangerous one, though, because when you see a shifting of the ionosphere, any type of shifting of, of um, movement of ions are going to cause current flow, and therefore you have the main thing. It says make sure your home breaker is off, but the breaker is not going to be enough. It'll arc across your breaker. Because as far as electricity is concerned, think of it this way, everything in your house is grounded. And what's happening with the current traveling down those lines is looking for ground. So when it gets to your breaker panel, even your main breakers, it'll simply arc across those breakers. So unfortunately, even with the E3 event, which is the big event, by the way, E1 and E2, E2 is just lightning. That's stuff we deal with all the time. E3 is the big one. The E3 event is what fries everything and destroys everything. And it's like at about one second, 1.3 second mark after the EMP. I forget the exact time anyway. But a breaker will not do it. A surge protector won't do it. All you can do is have an EMP shield, which shunts that current to ground. Anything else will shunt it to your devices and then to ground. And that's why things fry. But no, you're right about that. It is the, EM3, the E3 is the one you have to worry about. And that's actually what we're looking at with the EMP. Tormex sharpening system. Chad, I think that's the one I have. I'm going to have to look it up. I'm going to have to dig it out. It's been a while since I've sharpened my knives. Uh, let's see. Somebody said, can you describe the t uh, style of knife sharpener? Uh, is it three stone type? I don't know if it was. No, my sharpeners have the was belts it? on them. Yeah. But it has the different belts for the different grains. I wish I could tell you which one it was. We've actually it's had It's been a, a while. Few. No, we still have a few. You no, know, I know, but one of them was given at trouble, so we bought a new one, and I think that might be why we're not remembering what it was. Yeah. We pay our, our sons to sharpen the knives and things, and... Yep. And, uh, they do that, so... They um, have to ask it for extra money, so... Del Fargus, that's a fantastic question. What good is crypto if there's no electricity? Yep. Exactly right. I'm, I, listen, let's forget about crypto for a second. What's good of having money in a bank account? Because the majority of the money in your bank, everybody's bank, is digital currency already anyway. Um, they only have to have, depending on the, the level of the bank, by the way. Banks, if they want to be, able to be able to give out loans, let's say you want to buy a car through a bank or a house, they look at how much actual physical money is in the bank and then compare that with how well the bank's doing. And so then the Federal Reserve will say, okay, this bank, you have $1 million in currency. We'll let you give out $5 million in loans. So the majority of loans and everything from the bank 
are digital anyway. There's actually no real currency behind it, if that's going to scare you enough. So you're right. Digital coins, or sorry, uh, um, when you're talking about as far as the cryptocurrency, good luck getting hold to it. You're even your money too. Good luck getting a hold of it. It's going to be really scary. I always say make sure you have money on hand, a few hundred dollars at the very least. Um, it's weird, Jesse. Anybody else's screen frozen? I don't think so. I say probably be, for the fact that uh, YouTube um, did it probably. we have 800 some people in here and nobody said anything, so it's probably just your computer. Uh, let's see. <laughs> yeah, cash is going to be handy to wipe your butt. That's <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah, in pre Nazi Germany, they that used it as firewood. It's not be worth anything. My policy is I'm only buying gold after I have a bunker and 25 years of food. Yeah. That's fine. I, I think... You all have goals. I, yeah, the, I think... Person, and I, again, I'm, I'm all about diversifying. Gold is definitely a huge thing. But diversifying and having many things. Stuff that you want to use, by the way. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, people talk about buy cigarettes because people will really use those as hot commodities. That might be true. But personally, but I'd, comes I'd rather... Where are you going to end up smoking if you can't trade it for anything? You so go. you exactly. really are wasting money if you do that kind of stuff. Yeah, so I'd... really only stock up. The only thing I think what you could actually stock up would be liquor because if you bought like um, rum and vodka, you can use it for municipal. So if you couldn't trade that, which that would be probably the only thing, but I don't know about cigarettes. Uh, let's see. From Kathy says, I thought you were stopping your channel. No. No, no, we never said we were stopping our channel. We used to have... We've had multiple channels. We used to have twice. our family on. I mean, the only family you'll see, by the way, is our little baby here. A little baby. That one in our... And our eldest house. daughters. But the eldest daughters know how to defend themselves. You go after them, they're going to probably kick your butt too. <laughs> but I won't, well I won't put our other kids on there who are younger because that I think that asks for problems. You know what I'm saying? I had somebody even said, said, oh, you're just showboating because... You still put your daughters on there. I'm like, yeah, but they're adults. Yeah, they are adults. They're adults. So, and they choose to be on or not. Like exactly. they're not tonight. So, and then a baby, we don't let her out of our sight. Nope. But give it some time. Oh, she won't be on much. Yeah, longer. you won't see She's, her on the channel anymore. It's already getting borderline to her. Yeah, exactly. Being on anyways. So, from Matthew, can solar panels be protected from an EMP? Oh, actually, I, I apologize. There's actually a question from Gray Woman first. Gray Woman, seventy nine. Hello, Gray Woman. Which state is the most free state to live in? The state of denial. Because in that state, <laughs> everything, everything you're, yeah, you're no. right. That is so true. That's a good question. I, if I had to guess a free state to live in. Probably Montana. Yeah, I, would, I was going to say the upper west states. Yeah. Montana, Dakotas, probably. Um, I would, man, I, if it was my choice, I'd pick Montana. We didn't. We did a choice. We came to Michigan. Yeah, but it has things that we don't like. <laughs> no, that's true. When we came to Michigan, we had a whole list of things, a whole list of things that had but to be But that met. was to us. Some people might not. Right, exactly. That, but as far as freedom goes. Yeah, yeah, I know. It did. Yeah, I think so. I think probably like, I think Montana might be the place you want to yeah. go. We considered Montana. We did. There was we, a town we picked out that was perfect, and then we ended up like, yeah, yeah this town we looked at. Oh, my word. It was like gorgeous, oh, perfect town. Then we just found what out. We're looking for. We found out that's actually where the majority of asbestos was mined. Back in the day. Yeah, and they dumped and it in all the, the playgrounds. So they'd actually have this sludge stuff after they actually fabricated the asbestos. They'd dump the sludge. It was like, they felt to them like little rubber pellets. So they'd put it along the playground to the schools. It was everywhere. Yeah. So the EPA had to come in and do a super cleanup. And they said it's good now. But I was like, I'm not going nah, there. I don't think we're I don't think so. All right, so anyways, Matthew, can solar panels be protected from an EMP? Oh. Sure they can. Now, it's very interesting. I have actually consulted numerous expert sources that says that solar panels don't need to be protected anyway. Even though solar panels are semiconductor wafers, they're not going to be affected by an EMP, therefore they can't fry because it's not a semiconductor chip. I've, again, multiple sources, multiple, hello little lady, multiple sources have said this. So unless your actual solar panels are hooked up to your... Um, power converter, and I can't, my, my brain's already fried, guys. I'm not sure what it's called anymore. But all the stuff, the electronics it has to hook up to, that's a different story. But the solar panels themselves cannot be affected by an EMP. I've heard that from multiple sources. But I just had somebody recently say, oh, yes, they can. They have such and such in them. I'm like, yeah, but that's true. But I've heard from multiple expert sources that solar panels themselves will not be messed with, with an EMP or a CME. Now, the charge controllers, that's what I was looking for. The charge controllers and inverters, all that stuff, for sure can be, but the solar panels themselves will not be. If you worry about that, 
you can get some EMP covers, not like hard fixtures, but like covers to cover them up. And that's something you can do too, but those covers do have to be grounded if that's the case. Somebody asked, can you name five places, safe places to live? I don't know that. Hmm. I don't know if we could well, do that. Well, I'll try to name some. How about that? Um, as far as actual events taking place, surprisingly, Arkansas, the Ozarks, yeah, is, is listed as number one safest place to be in the U.S., which is interesting to me. Um, I'm not discounting Arkansas. Arkansas is absolutely beautiful. We consider Arkansas too, too but so hot. We're not hot people. Look at us. We're we're not hot. I wear an old sweatshirt, (laughs) which is covered in, I just noticed it's covered in soot from working in our wood stove. Um, (laughs) That's what I got for you. No, that's the only one I have for you. I'm just kidding. Upper Michigan. I know all the Michiganders on here are going to tell me to stop saying that because they want we don't want other people coming to Michigan. <laughs> but Upper Michigan, too, is fantastic. It's a really great it place. Is. That's why we came here. Um, Honestly, I don't know. That's, that's all I can think of. Yeah. We give you two, okay? Alaska. I'll put Alaska on there. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, so, it's, it, it's not a great place to grow food, though, so I don't know if that... I mean, it's safe, but it's not a great... There's a lot of food up there, though. Yeah. Just shoot. shoot yeah, well, you know, yeah. Lots, yeah lots, okay, lots, of, lots of meat. Meat and... Moose and stuff. If you're a vegetarian, it's not a good place. But um, kinetic. I, I've never seen goldbacks before. Um, are they laminated gold leaf? No, they're mm. not. It, the, the process, which again, everything is escaping my brain tonight. They literally have this PVC, and the gold is placed on the PVC, literally one atom at a time. And they, by putting the design on there, they know exactly how much gold is being put on there. But nevertheless, they still look at it as far as weight goes to make sure it's always correct, and it always is. But it's actually put on there through a process. I think it's using like static electricity or something on the PVC, something like that. But it is a gold leaf. And I'm probably going to do this for a later video. You can actually, if you wanted to, you could take a lighter and light it, and it'll melt the PVC off, and you'll just have a little gold nugget. No. But the whole process of making the gold back makes it worth more than just the gold. Um, it's like you buy a car. Are you buying the car because it literally is just a whole bunch of pieces of metal welded together? No, the engineering that went into it, the process of putting it together. And how cool it looks. <laughs> how fast it goes down the street. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so therefore there's a value in the car because of the engineering. Gold backs have value because of the gold and because of the engineering put into it. But I like that because if you didn't know it, by the way, you'd be amazed at how much counterfeit gold's on the market. You could literally buy gold that says Swiss gold, actually has the Swiss stamp on it and everything, and turns out it's fake. There's a lot of counterfeit gold on the market. And China is the number one culprit for pumping it into the U.S. Tons of it. Literally. And I mean physically, tons of it. The gold backs, practically speaking, are non-counterfeitable because of the process they make them with. And there's actually independent companies that test them that have nothing to do with gold back at all. And they say, yeah, it actually has literally that amount of gold on there specifically. So I'm just saying that. Phil said that, um, what is his name? JBS apologized. Oh, did he? Well, he, too late. He's gone now. <laughs> but then somebody else says, JPS won't last in a crap hits the fan. He, JPS won't last in a crap hits the fan scenario. They didn't la- he didn't last in our live stream. So yeah, how's he supposed to last there either? Um, yeah, isn't that funny, Sean? I used to rip two bu- two dollar bills in half, fold it up, and go on the bus and use the other half of the way home. <laughs> I remember as a kid people doing that kind of stuff. Um, let's see. A lot of people. Well, I did. Uh, yeah, night saves me. I did serve in the U.S. Army and did 15 months in Iraq. Yeah, my it, man, just... <laughs> my man, Tushy knows more about commitment. I know exactly. It's, it's, it's just it's hard. It's it's just. But JBS is just a small dog hiding behind a big fence. That's it. And I've, I've found, by the way, guys, it's the people who yell loudest are the biggest wusses who um, are the ones who are, are afraid. You, you just shouldn't accuse anybody like that. that. Especially for people in the military. That's just, it's not cool, man. It's not cool. Yeah. You have no idea what we've gone through. Yeah, exactly. But anyways, this whole thing just... Did we lose it again? Wow, no pain, no gain. Truth, I got one of those fake gold Swiss, Swiss gold oh, man. pieces. I'm sorry, that, that sucks. sucks. 
What are your thoughts on Haitians going to Florida, Ellie? Oh, we watched it's, that the other It's day. tough. We lived in Florida. And there were a yeah, lot we there. lived in South Florida. And it's funny because South Florida really is a, an amazing multi cultural, yeah. multinational it's really place. It's cool. It's fantastic. Well, it's I, I love gorgeous. all the different ethnic groups and the nations coming in. However, and I hate to say this because, I mean, it sounds racist, <laughs> not racist, it's countryist. It was pretty much well known down there that the Haitians were the ones that would steal stuff. They would. We had a yard sale once and oh my word, I oh, was yeah. like, I will never yeah, do that again. Yeah, that's true. Again. They'd come they try were, to steal your stuff. They were stealing stuff and I wanted a stinking quarter for it. And I'm like, well, if it's really that big of a deal, but it's the moral of the thing. They'll you want five bucks and they'll go, I'll give you 50 cents. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, and then they walk off with it. So Yeah, and that's, that's the thing is, I, I'm not all about trying to accuse people from a specific country, but I'm just telling you from our... From our experience, experience. we had some that were nice, and I'm saying, but it it is a little hard. But it's very different down there. Um, Steve will survive. It's a great name, by the way. I love the Adirondacks. Aren't the Adirondacks simply just fantastic? They are absolutely beautiful. We love them. Yep, absolutely. I'm all about. Wish we could spend more time up there. (laughs) It's funny, Ronald Simmons. Every time I hear Bob Singer, I think of. Oh, sorry, Bob Seeger. I think of Michigan back when it's still a good place to live. And it's funny because coming up here in Michigan, we came up here in 18? Yeah. 2018? It was like stepping back in time. It was. And and Bob Seeger is still played. I mean, outside of Michigan, I would hear Bob Seeger now and then. <laughs> but you turn on the radio here, it's still Bob Seeger all the time on the radio. I still love him on the stations. Love is everything. Question, after a nuclear war, how long would it take to get electricity and water back? No, no not soon. No, because all the transformers are going to be messed right, up. Right, yeah. So the electricity alone, issue. the electricity alone, bare minimum. We're talking about, I'm not even saying that it's going to be this short, three years, bare minimum. It's probably going to be five, five to seven. Yeah. And then water along with it. Um, surprisingly... Water doesn't have a lot of adverse effects when it comes to nuclear contamination, amazingly, really amazingly. Um, you do have to worry about heavy water, but you really have to consume a lot, of, a lot of it to be able to actually have it affect you. Fallout doesn't really affect water very much because the reservoir going to towns and stuff, the fallout just falls to the bottom. It doesn't actually mix through the water. There's a lot of great things about that. The biggest problem is the electricity getting the water to your house. So unfortunately, you're going to be also be looking at another thing where it's um, another five to seven years to get your water as well. And that's what we try to prep for here at our house is we have a well, a really deep one, mind you, unfortunately. And we also have a natural spring on the property with a live running creek year round, which is beautiful. So I could tap that if I want to. But honestly having the fam go down with buckets and tap into our running creek. I don't want to do that. Yeah, it sounds not fun. So what I do is for our well, which runs on 240, we just have, our, we have a gas generator, but of course, nuclear, that's not going to last very long because the gas is going to be gone. But we do have, we have what's called a mango system. It's cute. She keeps grabbing me. I know, baby. I know. Uh, we have what's called a mango system, which puts out 240. It's a solar power system that will keep our well pump going. So our next step is, again, we didn't like come up here and we're born preppers and everything was done. We, this, this whole we house, have, it's been projects for us. Yeah, projects. You got to pay what you can. So our next project, which I would like to do this summer, is have enough solar outside to run, keep my mangoes going. It's not going to be one of those huge systems that you think would run your whole house. It's not about that. It's about having enough water. electricity for water. Yeah. Maybe a couple fans if you need to. Fan for the wood stove during the winter. Yeah. And, and obviously we'll have like some rationing, you know, hey guys, we're running low on power guys. So turn your fans off. We need to, whatever the case may be, but our house is heated by a wood stove. And as long as we have, um, wood, then we're good to go. Of course, that means we're going to get the old hand saws and cut wood and chop it with an ax, but you got to do what you got to do when crap hits the fan, you know? That's what they need to make a rechargeable solar panel they, uh, chainsaw. They do. We have one. Solar panel? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, not the solar panel. So we, so. Oh, so it's, okay. I never mind. I see what you're saying. Battery operated. But right. So Got it. we have three Husqvarna chainsaws and we love Husqvarna. I mean, they really are made for cold weather, by the way. If it's warm out, then you don't want to run. They don't. It's funny. Um, but those things are like incredible. And that's what we do majority of our cutting with. But I was like, you know, crap, it's the fan. I want to be prepared. So we bought 
a electric system with an electric chainsaw oh, it's that one and lots of chains okay. to go along with it. And you won't get near the cutting time, no. even with a few batteries that you will with obviously a gas powered one. But again, if there's no gas, you're not getting your chainsaw from that at all. But at least yeah. the electric one, we could actually go out every day and cut some. Yeah, I guess it's better than the hand saws, man. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And it just jumped back down again. All right. Um, let's see. What happened to all those big bulk plastic Tupperware car- coffins? Yeah, David. It's it's really interesting. Um, yeah, Marsock Raider. I have my DD-214 too, although I wouldn't show it to him. Yeah, those giant Tupperware coffins. And it's funny because I remember seeing those back when I was practicing as a doctor. And... I was like, guys, listen. Well, they, they call them FEMA coffins. They're FEMA coffins. And I remember telling people at the time, I was like, but you have to understand, as a physician, we know it's just a matter of time before we have a, pan, a massive pandemic that's going to kill off a big population. And having hermetically sealed coffins so that way the pathogen cannot escape the coffin is important. And so when I saw all those, even though I was a prepper at the time, I was like, you know, partially it's from conspiracy like they're going to kill us all but it's also partly kind of makes sense too that if you do have something like that happening but it is interesting now where are they david what happened to all those coffins millions of stockpiles all the walmart's that everybody was worried about oh yeah walmart's too exactly oh no you can't store junior mints kim oh i'm sure you can. yeah you can't freeze dry them because it has the chocolate yeah yeah what do you do all right uh, how... how diversified is your food pantry us? Dwayne, that, if you're asking, yeah, he's asking us. Oh, yeah. I am all about diversification. I have a can of all. beans and a can of rice. And that's all, that's all and, you need. And, oh, don't forget, our can of hash. We okay, do have one, a can of Two hash. cans of corned beef hash. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, no, we're very diversified. We, in our house, we dehydrate. We can pressure and water breath, water breath, water bath. And we have a freeze dryer. Plus, we purchase... Everything from dried goods and wheat berries all the way up to canned food, ready-to-eat meals. We have it all. Granted, we don't really prep. Yeah. And I was never in the military. So we have like, <laughs> we have six things. Yeah. But it's all different Only things. Only five because we so ate we, so we beef diverse last by a week, lot. so. I'm sorry, I, I can't resist. Um, what are your thoughts on the eclipse? I don't think the eclipse is going to be a big deal at all. I think it's, I, I, and I'll say this, guys, here's the thing. I, every time there's an eclipse, you have a lot of people start talking about, like, there's all kinds of things going to happen with it. Um, but there's, I, as far as, like, I'm, I'm a physicist, you know, that's one of my degrees anyway. I didn't work a lot in physics. I was more theoretical. But I do have a firm understanding of all of it. It's just having the sun and the moon in conjunction is not going to change anything as far as our patterns of our water. It's not going to, you know, as far as, like, the waves and the the tides going in and out. It's not going to affect gravitational pulls, nothing like that at all. And so anything, it's either hype or people's plan is something I don't know about. The very bottom one, do we filter our water? Our well does not need a filter. The water is absolutely amazing. Yep. It's, it is absolutely fantastic. Now, we have a new sponsor who picked us up and sent us a water filter. Yeah. Um, if I actually have to collect water from our the natural spring's good, but if I have to collect water, let's say, from our creek or our pond, I'll definitely filter that out. All right, guys, it has been an hour, almost an hour and a half. That's really, I'm really enjoying it, guys, but I'm starting to get a little brain dead. I'm not remembering a lot of stuff right now, so I'm going to go ahead and call it a night. Are we on next week, Ashley? No, we will not be here next week. We have an event. <laughs> we, do have, we do have an event next week, right? Um, let's see. Yeah, the eclipse is going over the New Madrid, Madrid Fault, but the thing is... The moon itself, just going overhead, has much more gravitational acceleration on the Earth than the sun does as far as like affecting like the fault lines. Every time the moon passes over the Empire State Building, do you know this? The Empire State Building will stretch out by six inches every time the moon passes over. Then when the moon goes down, the Empire State Building goes back to its normal height, comes up overhead six inches. It doesn't do that with the sun. There's so much more effect from the moon than the sun. And for the fact that the moon is centered in conjunction, we've never seen a correlation as causing actually any type of fault line problems because of that. Um, oh yeah, Teresa, I live in a condo and he suggested for a fruit bearing tree to grow in a container. The only thing you can get away with is a dwarf tree. Yeah. Um, and even then, you have to look at it, the sunlight coming in, you're gonna still have to try to get as much direct sunlight as possible. 
and the plant's still going to have a hard time. So I'm not saying it can't be done, but it's just going to be difficult. All right, guys, I am going to call it a night. My brain is about to fall out of my head. But I appreciate you guys being here. And today's Sunday, which blows my mind. I keep thinking it's like Saturday or something. But we will, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I'll have my regular video out for you guys tomorrow. We will not be live next Sunday, nope. but probably the Sunday after that, I would say probably. I think so. I think we're free. I think. But I'll try to let you guys know. Thanks for coming, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys.